Hello, I'm Sarah Subiata Bennett, and I want to welcome you to the Dallas Express video podcast. Today, I'll sit down with Monty Bennett for another enlightening In the Mind of Monty segment. Plus, as this episode coincides with the festive occasion of St. Patty's Day, I'm excited to share with you one of my personal wellness favorites, Hello Hydration. Thank you for tuning in. Monty, our viewers and listeners do not have the chance or opportunity to see you as much as I do, but I am so happy you're back in that chair today. We have a lot to talk about. The last time you were here, I know I had asked you to come with a bunch of discovered insight on the amount of waste that the city was making or is making in regards to their spending. But before we delve into that and the gambling bit that I know we're going to touch upon today, TC Broadnax is no more. Can you give us any insight as to how it's going to affect the spending at city council and how it came to be? Sure. Well, uh, how it affects spending depends upon a lot on the city council. Are they going to hire some terrible city manager from another city, which is what I believe happened with TC Broadnax. He's been a terrible city manager, and I know that's not nice to say, but the facts speak <laughs> for themselves. And uh, or will they find someone that has better experience in actually running something efficiently? Uh, it could be another city manager that's very good or even someone from the business world to run it a lot better and a lot more efficiently. And it's a shame that it's taken this long for him to leave us. And uh, he's been here since I believe 2016 and the city has dropped in performance in every area that the Dallas Express uh, measures. And what's a real shame about it is not just the citizens of the city and the suffering that they've gone through with the increase in crime, the dirty streets, the rampant homelessness, but also the city council people themselves. They have taken big political hits for this, hits that might affect the rest of their careers, whether it's continue to be on the city council or if they have other aspirations or, or in business or whatever they may do, because they have let this gentleman stay far too long and it has hurt them politically. Uh, I think you know that we do uh, surveys of our readers and also of the population in Dallas in general. And TC Broadnax has always had terrible, terrible marks. There's another survey of sorts coming out here in a few days. We're calling it the Dallas Derby. And uh, it again shows terrible marks uh, for the city manager and is bleeding over onto the city council people and it's pulling their scores way, way, way down. And it's because the city manager has not focused on core issues. Crime. If you poll people, this is what they say every single time. That's what Chad West said. Crime, mm -hmm. homelessness, yeah. aggressive panhandling, street repairs, uh, cleanliness, and taxes being too high. These are the issues that people care about. And it's polled over and over again, yet there's no improvement. And I think what has happened is I think the city manager has taken advantage of his position to uh, maybe uh, uh, lead the city council astray and to communicate to them that things were in good condition when they weren't and to really take advantage of his position, a trusted position, because I believe the city council has been pulled away from focusing on these core areas that the citizens care about. And that's the city manager. The city manager has done that. And it's a terrible shame. So I'd say that, thank goodness, he's gone. Uh, January 3rd or so, which is his last day, I'm sorry, June 3rd, is, uh, is not soon enough. And again, I fear that the city council people will pay the political price because of his mismanagement of the city. Switching over to the details surrounding the significant waste that you were going to uncover, can you just speak as briefly as you can because I know that it's so detailed, exactly what that waste has been in the past under, specifically under T.C. Broadnax's leadership. Well, sure. The, the budget itself uh, under him has gone up like a billion dollars since he's been here and everything has gotten worse uh, in general. And when you pull the financial statements, they, they are so convoluted. They are so difficult to read. I uh, have a master's in finance and accounting, 
and I understand financial statements. And I worked on it with my chief accounting officer, who's a CPA and has been a CPA for 40 years or more. And the difficulty we've had to come through those statements, I mean, I can only imagine what a regular citizen without that background has because we've had trouble going through it and are still not through it understanding. So the first problem is how they present everything is convoluted and complicated. And I think designed that way to make it difficult to analyze and to understand and to govern. And one of the many features we want to roll out at Dallas Express is to reproduce that financial statement every month in a much simpler format. But let me give you a few examples. Mm -hmm. If you look at last year mm -hmm. compared to this year's budget, so just one year difference, and look at say the human resource department, and they call it human services, I believe, the budget for that has gone up 54% over actuals from the prior year, an astonishing amount. And why do we have 54% more employees? Well, I sure hope not. It is, it is millions of dollars. We have a data analytics department that employs 50 people. I don't know what they do, but I can tell you what they don't do. They don't figure out ways how to be more efficient and to manage the city better because it is terrible. Why do we need one as big as New York City? It's, it's crazy. We have a procurement department whose budget over last year's actual has gone up 40% year over year, library expense and has gone up 24% year over year. Do we have 24% more libraries than we did last year? The increases are off the charts. And in fact, there has been allegations of corruption going on, not just mismanagement, but corruption. And I'm not gonna assert that because we need people to go on the record at the paper but it is so bad, and we've heard from so many people about bad things going on, it's just that we can't get people to go on the record, and that's one of our core pillars compared to every other publication that in the country. If you're gonna say something, you've gotta go on the record because there's been too much of this anonymous. anonymous sources say, but it's been bad, and we need change, and we need it fast. So. The Texas political landscape is something that you understand intricately, very well, probably better than most politicians I know. It's pretty sad, but it's true. But you're also someone who has a very broad lifetime spent in hospitality, in entertainment, running businesses, multi-billion dollar corporations. What are your thoughts on bringing gambling to Texas. There's kind of two sides of the, of the aisle. There's people that are really pushing sports betting and uh, uh, betting at racetracks and these kinds of things, and then typical casino gambling. And some people are pushing both. Some are pushing one over the other, thinking that only one will pass versus the other. And so there's various factions moving around. We all know that uh, Sands has been making a big push in the state of Texas to legalize it. Um, I see it coming at some point, probably. But right now, I'm not a supporter. And the reason is because I'm interested in making our communities better. And gambling many times can bring unwanted elements to an area. And in downtown Dallas, we already have those elements. And gambling could make it much, much worse. I could only support gambling if I felt like it would come in in such a way that it would help the surrounding communities. Mm -hmm. It would help alleviate homeless not, just not throwing a bunch of money to the same old solutions that don't work. I shouldn't even call them solutions. Or paying off some pet project for some politician somewhere. It has to make meaningful improvement. Well, we're not even to the base level in Dallas yet. We need to solve the homelessness problem downtown, the crime problem downtown. And the downtown is the core from which everything emanates. Now, I don't live in downtown. I don't own any property downtown. Yet. I'm going to buy some, I hope. <laughs> but I don't have a, a horse in, in that race right now mm -hmm. from either living or company. I want to move my business down there, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to until it improves. We have to improve downtown. 
everything emanates from downtown and we have too many problems that this city manager has not solved and the city council has let him get away with it. So in order for gambling to come through, I think that the proponents need to get other people on board, such as myself and yourself, to show us that this is going to really help our community and that there's safeguards in place to really help our community and not let the worst parts of gambling lift its ugly head and to make our city worse. We want it to be better. So until for me, it's proved to me that it's gonna make our city better, I'm against it. That could change tomorrow if I could see a plan that shows that. But so far, I haven't seen that plan. I've seen a lot of people that plan on getting rich, a lot of people that are already rich that want to get even richer because of gambling. Well, that reason is not good enough. For me, the reason needs to be how does it help our community? And I haven't seen anything definite, just lots of words, and we know where that gets us. So I'm going to oppose it strongly until I see that. Okay. Well, I have faith that you will somehow figure out how to make it make a positive community impact because I very much want it to come to Texas. And here's one suggestion mm -hmm. is if any tax revenue produce goes specifically to the amount per student in public education for kids from very low income houses. So instead of them getting a school getting say $12,000 per year for student, they get a materially higher amount for low income kids. And so those schools can have more services that keep the kids off the street and these kinds of things. But that only works if you have greater competition in these areas. When you have a monopolist like DISD, they try, but there's 50,000 kids that are in failing schools in DISD. And it's, it's a terrible, terrible thing. Some great people in town are doing a lot of things to try and change that. It's gonna take years and God bless them and I support them. But in the meantime, these kids need to be educated. We need more public charter schools. We need even private schools, in my opinion, to come to the table. Above all the ideology, the kids come first and the kids need to be educated. And we've been doing the same thing with the same results for 50 years in this city. And it has to stop and it has to change. And these kids need to get educated. So if you had some money earmarked for those kids and there was a competitive environment to provide schooling to these kids. Now that's something that I could get really behind and a lot more interested in because we need to educate the poorest among us so they have a chance in life. Yes, um, that is absolutely true. But I know in many instances, there's been promises of having the revenue go <laughs> towards education but in practice, the accountability never holds up. It's sad, it is politics. Yeah, it is, it is. And as far as you know, at this point, what is preventing gambling from coming to Texas or Dallas? Well, it's unconstitutional. And well, so it has to, uh, it has to pass. Um, and right now, I can tell you my sense is, is there's not a huge opposition to it. Um, it's as much as there's not a huge movement behind it. Of uh, the people that uh, would want it, and if you poll it, it's more than 50% popular, but no one is calling their local rep saying, I really need gambling uh, in my uh, area. Mm -hmm. uh, they're just as fine to, to drive to Shreveport or to Oklahoma. It, it's not a big demand, and so that's the difficulty they have. There's no momentum behind it, other than the people that stand to make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And um, that's just not enough to move uh, a number of the, uh, the state senators, especially. And it wouldn't move me either. Um, people do well in this state financially, and we don't need to make them any richer. If they do become richer, that's fine. I don't hate people that are wealthy, but um, that's not a good enough reason. We need to help our community by doing it. We need to help the state. And there's nothing out there that I've seen that's going to help anything um, and, and really help the people in the state. So that what is, needs to get behind it. I appreciate you for being here.
Thanks for having me. Now come along with me as we indulge in one of my cherished wellness practices, a rejuvenating home visit from Hello Hydration. Each service is administered by a medical professional while their transformative products work wonders for the body. So I'm here with Nick Solis from Hello Hydration. He's become a good friend and I'll let him describe the exact nature of this business. We are a 100% mobile health and wellness concierge. We do hydration, we do anti-aging, we do weight loss as well. Uh, this morning we're going to do uh, our most comprehensive drip, it's called the Cowboy, and it does a little bit of any, everything. Helps you with energy, helps you with focus, helps your metabolism, helps you with sleep, and also is a really good immune system supporter and a liver detoxifier as well. It is so thorough, and the first time I got it I even asked him, is this legal? Because <laughs> there's one part, what is it? So it's the vitamin product, which actually um, we uh, recently lost access to, but we've gone into three months of research and development and now have our own proprietary mix called the Push. Ah. So anytime life has you a down, all you can use is a little push and uh, it works excellent. And when that thing goes into this line, it is, absolute madness your body becomes warm it's this sensation that's really hard to explain but i'll do my best as it's happening to me um i have i'm way overdue for this particular drip there's truly nothing else like it on the market there's not i've used i mean i use other concierge services for the, ooh, here it comes <laughs> <laughs> for this for that but no there's nothing like this treatment Oh, sweet Lord, it's kind of past the moment of warmth and the, the, the loopy <laughs> greatness. Oh my gosh, that was powerful. This one I think is more powerful than the last one or potent. So it's, I think uh, it has to do with some of the uh, components. So the we have a pretty significant dose of vitamin B3, mm -hmm. which is where the flushing and redness and the heat comes from. And then sort of that, that loopy sensation, there's also a gram of magnesium in that push. So, oh, great. Uh, it, it definitely helps to calm smooth muscles and that's why you feel like that, whoa. Yeah. The really nice feeling yeah. that you get with it. It's, it's really terrific. So it looks like we're done. We're gonna do the last step here. This one really, really, I'm feeling. Where's my dehydration coming from? All my traveling? Only one in six Americans are properly hydrated. Just period, period, period. So dehydration and intake of water is something that we're just not good at. I'm pretty good oh, really? at water. At water. But I'm dehydrated, I can feel it. Activity, travel, there's, there's any number of reasons. Illness, I know you had a birthday recently. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I had a birthday, my kids had a big birthday celebration. Um, yeah, there's just been a lot. So I want you to leave this on for about an hour just to make sure we don't get a bruise under there. Okay. Fast and easy. Thank you so much, Nick. You're very welcome. It was my pleasure as usual. And right in the comfort of your home. That's the best part. All right, I just finished with Nick from Hello Hydration for the third segment that's gonna be launching on St. Patrick's Day. And there's gonna be a lot of dehydrated people around town, which is why I thought it would be really special to have him here, he's a good friend, he's done lots of treatments for myself, members in my family, but I feel fantastic. This Cowboy IV Drip is seriously better than anything you've ever tried, anywhere, any type of IV, it's the best. So, I'm feeling extra generous, I wanna share this love, so I'm gonna Venmo Nick um, a credit for you all to be able to enter and win one of these Cowboy Drips yourself, and in conjunction with that, I wanna share some of my favorite facial masks and some, some of those dose drinks that I like to take as well. And if there's anything else that I can think of, like some hydration packs, I'll throw that in there as well. Good luck.